a couple of things before I start today. Number one, this video took a lot longer to set up than I originally expected. And number two, this video is really going to reveal me to be a massive fangirl, but you all already knew that anyway. Hi everyone, my name is Chloe, welcome back to my channel, thank you for being here today. Today's video is a new part in a series, kind of, I don't really know what to call it, but I do videos to help you get to know me and my reading taste a little bit better. I know that sounds a little bit strange being a year into this channel now, but I originally started it a while ago and I just haven't really done many of these videos and I keep meaning to. But each one of these videos I pick one of my favourite authors to talk about and I rank their books. Now that can be on personal preference, it can be on like emotional connections to them, it's a bit different for each one to be honest. This one is a bit different from all the others as well because the author I'm going to talk about today I decided to talk about because again two things there's a lot of number two in this video today but two reasons one being that I have said I want to talk a little bit more about theatre on this channel and this author very much links into that but also she has a new book out this week and I thought why not celebrate her old books on a week that she has a new book out. So the author I'm going to talk about today is Carrie Hope Fletcher. Now Carrie Hope Fletcher is a author but she is also a West End actress she is my favourite West End actress. I've seen her in many things, as you are going to hear about in the rest of this video. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about my favourite books from her, but I'm also going to talk about all the times that I've been to see her on stage and the kind of many times that I've met her, actually. I didn't realise quite how many times it was until I was sort of getting things ready for this video. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about a book by her and then a theatre performance. The books I'm going to put in order of preference, the theatre shows I'm going to put in chronological order because I do have a favourite performance which is going to be the first one I talk about or is a little bit easier to go through chronologically. I am rambling a lot today, I am very scatterbrained, I'm in a very strange mood but this needs to be filmed today so we're, we're just gonna go with the weird vibe sorry for the weird energy right let's start talking about books the first one actually that i'm gonna mention i'm not really putting in the rankings because it's a little bit of a different type of book and i am not the intended audience it is actually a first book that she ever released it is a non-fiction book that is aimed at teenagers it's called all i know now so this one came out in 2015 and it is an extension of carrie's youtube channel or what carrie's youtube channel was at the time she kind of had the moniker of the internet's big sister it's it's just a lot of videos about kind of being kind to yourself and to others and being confident and just kind of getting through life really and that's what this is it is aimed at teenagers it's not aimed at me I was 24 when it came out so it wasn't aimed at me at that point either but I did read it because I enjoy Carrie's person and it's part like an advice book but part memoir as well and I really enjoyed the stories that were in there I've never I've not reread it since it came out I don't ever plan on rereading it but I'm happy I have it on my shelves. Like I said, it's a completely separate one to the rest of the books I'm going to talk about. But it is also a signed copy. I got this one signed at Stage Door for the first show that I'm going to talk about that I saw Carrie in. So let's move on to that, shall we? I want to talk about some theatre today. So I'm not going to talk about each individual performance I've seen of Carrie separately, as in I've seen some shows multiple times and I'm not going to talk about, oh, this one time I saw her in this show and then this other time she did this different option and all of that, because that's just going too far. I've realised I've seen her like 13 times and that's not including like performances at Western Live and things like that. So I'm just going to group it by roles that she's played instead. So the first one being the first West End production that she did as an adult. She was in West End productions as a child, but the first one she did as an adult was Les Miserables. Now for anyone who doesn't know, Les Miserables is my favourite show of all time. I have seen it 21 times I think it is now which I know is excessive like th th I have a problem it's it's fine um but it is my favorite all-time show my favorite character is character of Eponine and Carrie played Eponine she actually played Eponine as a child as well but she played her as an adult and that was the first time I ever saw her on stage and Carrie's portrayal of Eponine is my favorite portrayal of Eponine I've ever seen my favorite performance I've seen her do I just I, I love it I can't even explain it it's just like a very good mix of an actress that I really love and a role that I really love coming together and I think how much I loved her in that role is probably part of the reason why I love everything else that she's done so much because I have this sort of connection to that but anyway the first time that I saw her in that role was apparently in 2014 I've got my programs here and I've sort of wrote in the corner because I have so many Les Mis programs I've had to label which ones are from which date 
to match up with my tickets. So yeah, the first time I saw it was in 2014. I think she'd been in it for about a year at this point. I wasn't sure she was leaving at cast change. So I bought a ticket to make sure I didn't miss out on her being in it. And I managed to go. I went on my own. It was the first time I'd ever been to the theatre on my own. I've done it so many times since. And I was not disappointed. I really, really, like I said, loved her performance. And also it is the first time that I ever met her. I met her at stage door after I will insert a picture here. She was just a really, really lovely person at stage door as well. So everything kind of all came together so then i went to see it two more times by the way this is this looks like i've seen it a lot more times this because i bought the program and the souvenir brochure both times i went but yeah i went to see it two more times i definitely took the book with me at one point to get signed at one of these performances but i can't remember which one i'm just checking to see if i got the program signed at any of them i didn't look at apparently i went to see her again a year later which was in june 2015 again i think that was just in case she left at cash change and also at that point i was living in london so it was a lot easier for me to go and then i did go and see her one last time before she left and that was in january 2016 and that time i got the program signed as well she was again just absolutely lovely i remember the last time in particular she was really really tired when she came out but she still stopped and talked to every single person that was at stage door for her which I just thought was really nice she doesn't have to do that I will say I'm very much a big believer of when you buy a ticket to see a show you are not buying a ticket for stage door if they don't come out stage door not their problem sometimes they just have to go home but it is always appreciated when they do come out and these times she did I have been seeing shows sometimes where she hasn't come out especially obviously recently with covid but every time that she has managed to come out of stage door she has been absolutely lovely so the next book I have to talk about is one of her fiction books everything from here on out is fiction she's written five adult books i've read four of them so far because one of them's only just come out and she's written one middle grade so now i'm going to rank them from my least favorite to my favorite i will say i say this on every one of these videos when it's the least favorite by an author i really love i'm still gonna like it it's just not my favorite of their books this one actually i think i need to reread because i think i might appreciate it more on a reread than i did the first time this is actually her second novel and it is called all that she can see so this tells a story of Cherry. Now Cherry is a baker, she owns a little bakery in a small town and she has a couple of special abilities. So one of them is that she can see things that other people don't that are all to do with emotions and another one is that when she bakes she can do things with her baking that kind of helps people's emotions and just helps them to feel better. But then one day someone turns up in town who doesn't quite like what Cherry is doing with her baking and sets about to kind of unravel all of the good that she is doing and it all goes from there. Now I remember liking the idea of this book but not necessarily the execution of it. I think it might be that I wanted it to be a little bit more fantastical. I can't remember the specifics of it too much which is why I want to reread it and especially I want to reread it because there's a lot of discussion of kind of mental health and things in here and I think I wasn't necessarily expecting that when I went into it and I would like to reread it and just kind of see if that hits a little bit different than it did last time I read it. Like I said I did really enjoy it. I think I gave it a four star so not a bad rating at all but it was on the lower end of the four star when I rated it where some of these other ones are higher than that. So yeah I enjoyed it. It wasn't my favourite hence why it is sort of the lowest of her fictions on this list but I'm really really tempted to reread this one in particular and I don't know why. Also I got this one signed at a book signing that I went to. So next performance that I saw at Carrie's I don't actually have a program for because they didn't have any in the theatre when I went and it really annoyed me because I always collect programs from every show that I've been to but anyway she played the role of Truly Scrumptious in the musical Chitty Chitty Chi Bang Bang. Now I love this film growing up. I didn't necessarily have that much interest in seeing the show though it just wasn't one that I was that fussed about seeing and then she got announced and they were doing the tour and I was like well it's come in here so I might as well go. So I did and also it had Lee Mead in it playing Caractacus and I also really like him I'd seen him in Joseph before so yeah I was down to go and I was pleasantly surprised by this show. It was just a really sort of fun it didn't ruin the film at all which is kind of think what I was worried about. It was fun the car flew it was a good time again I went to stage door after I will insert a picture here I think this is when I got all I know now signed actually I think that was around this time and yeah I don't have too much else to say about this one it was just a fun family show to go and watch so the next book i'm going to talk about i think it's not really a surprise that it's sort of one of the lower down ones on my list because i had mentioned before i'm not a massive middle grade reader but this is actually a middle grade that i did enjoy so like i said although it's lower down still very much enjoyed it it was a four star so this one is called
called Into the Spotlight. This one came out last year, I think it was, maybe the year before. It was during the pandemic, I know that much. It's actually inspired by another book. It's a classic called Ballet Shoes, which I have never read, but I have watched an adaptation of it on the BBC many years ago. And it is all set in a theatre. It's about these three children who are all taken in by the owner of the theatre. They're collectively known as the Pebbles. And basically the theatre is at risk of closing down and they all kind of come together to help save it and it's all about sort of this fan family within this theatre and it was just it was really adorable and really fun and yeah for someone who doesn't like middle grades I actually really really enjoyed this book. The only reason I said it's not higher is that middle grades don't tend to be higher for me for some reason and I do actually really like the adult books that she's written that I've still got to talk about but I really really did enjoy this one and I do recommend it to people because it's a book about theatre you'll see another one of those later on in this video. So the next performance that I saw were getting onto the fun ones because this is the first of two musicals that I had been desperate to see anyway because they had never been on in the UK and then when the casting got announced for both of them I was like yes I am here for this. So the first one being The Addams Family. Again this was a UK tour and it did come near me which is very convenient and Carrie was playing Wednesday Addams. I love The Addams Family like I've loved it since I was a kid. I love those films so much. I've dressed up as Wednesday many a times on Halloween and I've been wanting to see The Addams Family musical for years now and a few years before this tour got announced I think Carrie had done a concert which was possibly with the writer of this show it was one of those where there was lots of different songs from different musical theatre performers and she'd done a rendition of Pulled which is Wednesday's song from this musical so when the casting got announced it kind of felt a little bit inevitable because it's like yes we've seen her do this song it's very good and then by the time it actually got to the show the rendition of that song was so much better because the version we'd seen before was just like a straight song version whereas this this one with the acting involved it was just so good I really love this music I actually went to see it again earlier on this year with the new cast and still really really enjoyed it which is always a good sign when you've gone to see it partly because there's someone you like in it and then you go and see it with a different cast and you still enjoy it that's always a sign of a good show so yeah I love the Adams Family I would say that I would recommend anyone that can go and see it to go and see it but unfortunately they've just cancelled the last few stops of the tour so hopefully they'll be able to do it again at some point it's a Covid casualty I believe but yeah a really really good show if anyone gets the chance to go and see it. I have no photos from stage door at this one like I said there are a couple of shows where she didn't come out absolutely fine she didn't come out for this one so there we go. The next book that I have to talk about is I believe the only one of these ones that I don't have signed which really annoys me because I can't go to a book signing for this new release that's coming out because she's doing a tour next week and I can't get to any of the dates and this is the only one that I need to have signed it's the last book that she released basically I bought the unsigned version because I think it came out right at the beginning of the pandemic and I bought the unsigned version thinking that I would be able to go to a book tour or I'd see her in I had tickets to see her in Cinderella I was like I'll take it to stage door because I'd rather get a personalised version instead of just like a pre-signed one from Waterstones and then Covid happened so, so that stopped all of those plans but this book is called In the Time We Lost. This one is about a girl who has had a recent tragedy, a recent loss in her life and she decides to take herself on a little bit of a self-care trip to kind of take herself away from everything. She goes to the most remote place, it's an island like off the coast of Scotland I believe and there's only like one boat there every day and she decides to go there on this little retreat and it's the middle of July but when she gets there there is a freak snowstorm and then some strange things start happening it says on here it says how many times would you start again for love and on the and then on the tagline in here it says will history repeat itself or will they have a future so it gives you an idea of what the strange things that start happening are i actually really like this one i liked some of the sort of heavier topics that it dealt with and i really liked the ending as well i'm not going to give anything away but i just it wasn't the ending that i expected but it, i really appreciated it and how it was done so yeah we're getting to ones that i really enjoyed now basically carrie's books tend to be mostly contemporary but with a little bit of a magical twist which is one of my favourite types of books to read and I know I'm probably a little bit biased as well but I just find her books really easy to get lost in and really quick to read so I really enjoy them and that and this was one of those ones I think I read it in like two days so yeah I'm just holding all these up and wanting to reread them all okay we're gonna talk about a couple of different performances here because the next time I actually saw her wasn't for a role it was for a individual concert she did a series of concerts at Cadogan Hall in London and this was really cool because she brought her brother on stage with her and I'm also a big fan of McFly so it was nice to see her sing with Tom Fletcher and Rob Houchin came on stage with her as well who is one of my favourite West End actors and it was just nice to see her sing some 
other things. She sang songs from like musicals that she possibly wouldn't get cast in because she's not right for the role, but she just wanted to sing the songs. She sang some stuff from musicals that she had been in and it was just really nice to see her do a solo concert. She's doing a tour next year and I have tickets for that already as well. So this was a fun one. And then then we have a really fun one because again it is a show that I was desperate to see regardless of who was cast in it because okay let's not like try and draw it out or anything I'm going to talk about Heathers. Heathers is so good I love the musical so so much if you think you don't know anything about Heathers musical you've possibly heard some of the songs on TikTok because they were going around there a while ago but it's based on a 1980s teen film which has a bit of a cult following and it, the, if I describe the story it all sounds really strange but it's basically about this girl called Veronica who starts who for reasons starts hanging out with the popular girls in school who are all known as Heathers. So you've got Heather McNamara, Heather Duke and Heather Chandler the almighty she is a mythic bitch. I'm, I'm just I'm quoting I'm just quoting the show at you now. Anyway Veronica ends up in this flirtation with a boy called Jason Dean who's a little bit of a bad boy and when she ends up having a falling out with the Heathers things happen there's murder that's disguised as suicide and it all just kind of goes from there it's a it's a very strange it's a very over the top show it is fantastic i also love the film the film is also like objectively if you watch the film it's not that great like the first time i watched it i was like what am i watching now when i watch it i'm just like this is the best thing i have ever seen in my entire life anyway i've been wanting to see heather's musical for a while i would listened to the original cast recording from new york many a times i loved barrett gilbert weed's version of veronica but it never quite got the success that it deserved in new york and i didn't look like it was going to come over here and then suddenly it was and like i said i was buying tickets regardless of who was cast and then Carrie was cast as Veronica and I was so happy to get tickets to this show. I was working in retail at the time and I asked my manager at work who was also obsessed with musicals if I could go and hide in the stock room for five minutes to get pre-sale. Ended up being that the website broke and it took me half an hour to get tickets but he just kept coming in to check on me and going have you got tickets yet? And, and I did. I managed to get them. I went to go and see it at the other palace and actually the night that I was there I was sat second row and the night that I was there they came out and announced that it was transferring for a full West End run and actually if you watch Carrie's video she did a YouTube video about the day that the announcement happened and you can see me in the crowd in that video which is fun and they told us when it was announced they said this is going to be being put on like Twitter in about 10 minutes but the sale's already happening so you guys have 10 minutes early access to buy the tickets so I literally bought tickets to go and see it on the West End as I was walking out of the theatre from this. I really, really love this show. I've seen it again since. I'm really tempted to go and see it again in London because it's back on at the other palace. And I have nothing else to say about this show. I just love it so much. Actually, no, I do have one thing to say about the show. What was really fun about this, actually, is that they were kind of still workshopping it when it was on at the other palace. From when it started, there was already a new song in that wasn't in the US production. It's I Will Never Shut Up Again, which is Heather Duke's song. But then there was also a new Veronica song that was added in a week after I went to see it at the other palace. And I actually went to one of Carrie's book signings about a month later. And I said to her then, I was at the night when you announced that you were going to West, to the West End. And her first reaction to me was, that means you haven't seen the new song. And I was like, no, but I already have tickets. And her response to that was, I'm biased because I get to sing it every night. But oh my God, it's such a good song. And yeah, it really is. It's called I Say No. And it's one of my favourite songs from the musical. And yes, I did go and see it when it went to the West End as well. Okay, so second to last book that we're going to talk about and that is her book that she has that is all about theatre. It is called When the Curtain Falls. I really really love this one. I think the only reason this one isn't my favourite is because the last one I have to talk about had such like an emotional reaction to the when I finished it that I can't not put it as my favourite. But this one I really really loved. Obviously I'm going to love a book about theatre. It's told in two timelines. So in the past there was a production of this play and it ended with tragedy backstage and no one's entirely sure what actually happened or what the series of events were that led to that. But years later they are putting on a new production of this play at the same theatre and it seems like history is going to repeat itself and maybe there is some ghostly happenings that are leading to that and yeah I just really love this because I think I meant I mentioned this in my video I did actually all about theatrical books is that you can tell that this is written by somebody who knows this world and it feels like a love letter to theatre and I just really really enjoyed it. The book signing that I just spoke about was actually for the release of this so this is my personalised copy that I have. Okay we have two more shows to talk about the first of 
of which is one that I've already spoke about, but she played a different role when she went back into it. Because I went to see Les Mis again, of course I went to see Les Mis again, I don't need an excuse to go and see Les Mis again. Whenever there's a new cast, regardless of who it is, I'll try and go and see it again if I'm able to. And this time it was actually for the staged concert version, so basically Glim is, is on at a theatre which used to be known as the Queen's and is now known as the Sondheim and what happened was they did a refurb of the theatre and they did some changes to the staging as well of the original version of Les Mis. We'll not go there and talk about my feelings about the changes to the staging because why is there not a revolve anyway? So what they did is rather than have it not running for a period of time they moved next door to the Gilgood and they put on a concert version a bit like the version they did for the 25th anniversary at the year two. So this version had Alfie Bo as Valjean, it had Michael Ball as Javert, it had Matt Lucas as Thenardier, it was a star-studded cast and it also had Carrie Hope Fletcher as Fontaine this time. So Fontaine is she who sings the song I Dreamed a Dream, the one that you probably heard of from Les Mis. She was played by Anne Hathaway in the film. It's a very pivotal role in the show but it's also quite a small role. She's in it for like the first half hour and then she's gone but that first half hour is fairly impactful. Like I said we've got I Dreamed a Dream in there so I wanted to go and see Carrie's version of Fantine and to be honest I tend to not really love performances of Fantine like I don't hate them but it's never my favourite in the show I think I've probably seen about 10 different Fantines now and there's been like three that I've really really loved one of them being Leia Salonga at the 25th anniversary concert version one of them being Lucy Jones because Lucy Jones could do no wrong and the other one being Carrie because some of the acting choices were just very very good so I'm really happy that I got to see it and actually when it went back next door to the Sondheim as it is called now she went into it for a while to do the fully staged production as fun team for a couple of months and I managed to go and see that as well it was just before lockdowns actually I think I went to see it in December 2019 so not too long before the pandemic hit and I'm really glad that I got to go and see it so yeah I'm not gonna ramble about how much I love Les Mis again but we all know I do. Actually before I talk about the last book I do have one more time that I met her in between performances because I met her at Yelp 2019 actually which was before I saw her in Les Mis. I think what we spoke about was how excited I was to see her in Les Mis and I ended up buying a paperback copy of When the Curtain Falls because I didn't have any books of hers that weren't signed at the time and I bought this one in the hopes that I could force my mum to read it because it's paperback and she doesn't like reading hardbacks. She's still yet to read it but this video is making me remember that I need to make her read this one so yeah I got that one signed as well and then we have one last book that I've read to talk about and we have one last theatre show to talk about as well but the last book I had to talk about is on the other side. So this is actually her first book. It is about a character called Evie Snow and she is an old lady at the beginning of the book and she passes away. She's got to the end of her life. There's no big drama about it. She lived a long life. She was married. She had kids, grandkids, all of that sort of stuff. And she goes to kind of pass over to the other side, wherever that may be. But when she gets there, she gets to a door and finds that her heart is too heavy to get through the door. And she needs to kind of release some secrets and some burdens from years ago in her life and it's all sort of about lost love and finding you way back to each other and it's just it's just really beautiful and the reason why this is my number one I did actually put it in my list of books if I could only keep 10 books this would be one of the ones I keep because when I finished this book I literally just hugged it to my chest and like sat with it like this for about half an hour and I just didn't want to let it go I don't even know why like I don't know why this book hit so hard it's not that it like hit hard like I, we related to it or anything like that I just really loved the story and really and found it really beautiful and yeah I've not had that reaction to any of the others since I've enjoyed all the others but I've not quite had the same reaction as I did when I read the first one so it has to still be my number one on this list there is also a tiny novella in that world by the way but I can't really like put this anywhere on this so I'll just hold it up to let you know that I also have it and then last but not least for performances we have got the show that she is currently in which I have now seen free time and it's been on stage for less than a year and I don't even live in London anymore so I don't even have that excuse I just really enjoyed it. It is Cinderella. It's a new Andrew Lloyd Webber musical. I like Andrew Lloyd Webber musicals. I know that everyone does but I do. I have some nostalgia for them. The first show I ever saw was Joseph and the Amazing Technical Dreamcoat. I plan on watching Jesus Christ Superstar this, this weekend because it is a tradition that I always watch it near Easter. I actually really enjoyed Cats, the musical, not the film. We do not talk about the film. But 
I was really excited to see this. I actually really enjoyed it. I think seeing it on stage is a lot better than listening to the album because the album is a concept album. It has been changed since and it does just work better seeing all the staging and the performances as well. I think some of the performances make this show rather than the music itself, although there are some standout songs that I do actually really enjoy. I'm looking at you, I know I have a heart. It's it, it gets to me. But yeah, I had tickets to this pre-lockdowns and then it kept getting delayed and then I was in London for a weekend in September to go and see a comedy show that had also been delayed since pre-lockdowns and I had a free afternoon and I said to my mum, I'm like, I know we're going to see it in November but do you mind if I go and see it on my own first because I'm just desperate to see it and I was worried that we were going to have another lockdown. So I went to go and see it on my own and then I went to see it for my birthday with my mum and my sister and then there is some particular staging that happens in this show that means that there is some seats towards the front that are particularly exciting to sit in. So when I went back to London for like a little bit of a self-care trip that I took myself on last month, I bought tickets to sit in that front section so that I could be in the fun seats and yeah, I'm really happy that I did. I don't know if I'll be going to see it again anytime soon. I think I might have hit my limit for a little bit. I know Carrie is leaving it soon though so I might want to see whoever they cast as Cinderella next, providing that it carries on once Carrie has left. That was not an intended pun but it happened. But yeah, I did really really enjoy this show and yeah, nothing else to say about that. And as I mentioned, I do have tickets to see her again because I'm going to see her tour next year. I'm a fangirl. I told you this. I did warn you of this. I, like I said, did not realise until I was like gathering pictures and stuff for this video how many times I have actually like gone to stage door and met her or like just quite how many performances like I forgot that I've seen her in Les Mis five times. For some reason in my head I only had it as four, which I know is not that different of a number, but still I forgot. Anyway, that was a random video of me gushing about some books that I like, but also a musical theatre performer that I like. Like I said, actually, there is one more book that she has out that I haven't read yet, so I can't talk about, but it came out this week and it is called With This Kiss. And this is my beautiful Waterstones edition because look, we got sprayed edges. She's got special editions going on now. This one, I believe, is about a girl when she kisses someone, she can see how they're going to die. And I don't know anything else other than that, but I'm excited to read it. It will be on my TBR. If I finish my April TBR, I'll be reading it this month. If I don't finish my April TBR or I don't finish it until the very end of the month, I will get it onto my May TBR. But yeah, I'm very excited to have this one. Yes, I got the signed edition because like I said, I can't go to the book tour, which is a little bit annoying. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff down below. Let me know. Let me know two things. Let me know if you have read any of Carrie's books, if you like them, if you're interested in picking any of them up. And also let me know if you have a favourite musical theatre performer that you have seen or just wish you could see on stage. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys soon with a new video. Bye.